Uh, um, not really for public comment. Uh, we're involved in those discussions. We have attorneys working on it, uh, but not so many. Are you guys publicly. negotiating with the feds? On that? Uh, there are people working on that with the county. Well, you said 27,000 spaces in the city of the stadium. Can you give us an idea in terms of the geography you're looking at right now? Uh, there are some to the west, some to the north, and some to the south. <laughs> not to be overly specific, but we've identified with the help of Kim and Horn uh, over 100,000 spaces within essentially a three mile radius. And obviously, people don't want to park three miles away and, and walk. Uh, you would have to have a pretty strong infrastructure program in place and a transportation plan in place and work on uh, as I said in my comments, if we find that moving parking from one specified area to multiple areas, uh, both the north, south, east, and west, makes the most sense, we want to have those options available. So we've reached out to a number of property owners. I don't want to disclose them because many of them have said uh, they don't want it out there. So if they choose to say publicly that they're in discussions, that's up to them. Um, but we have talked to property owners uh, all around the land see their interests. Some are looking to sell the land, some are looking to lease the land, some are looking to partner with us. And so we have multiple options available to us and we're hoping to pursue those under the time frame that we have today. Are you disclosing any names in particular or, or any of the casino properties? Again, I don't want to make a comment on that. They've asked us to, to keep that confidential and we're going to protect that. Yeah, well, I was just going to ask you, are, are you running into a problem of people really trying to jack the price of our uh, look, there are some people that are being opportunistic, and there's some people that are being reasonable, and you can guess which ones we're talking to. The NFL doesn't have any requirements on parking, do they? Uh, they don't have a specific number similar to what's in the statute or what's in the, the county's requirements. No. You talk, you talk a little bit about the, uh, the importance, you mentioned taking this very seriously, Raider fans take that tailgating very seriously, yep. and just how important this is to be franchised. We have approximately 3,000 active tailgates uh, at our stadium right now, and we have approximately 9,500 spots. Uh, I don't know if the numbers will be identical, but it gives you a good ballpark based on the number of people that are coming, the type of tailgate environment we have there, and the type of tailgate environment we want to preserve when we move to Las Vegas. So we need to identify the best lots for that, where they are, what that experience may be. It may be uh, substantially different than what people are looking at, what people have right now in Oakland. It may be improved. Um, so we want to take a look at all of the options available for the fans on game day, some of which that will want to tailgate, and some of which that will want to get dropped off, and some of which will want to ride the monorail, some of which will want to walk, some of which will want to take Uber. Uh, so there's a number of options available, and we're working with Kimmy Horn, we're working with the county, we're working with uh, the RTC. So we have a pretty, a pretty big team on it. It's important to us. It's always been important to us. I think at the first meeting, going back two years, people were asking about parking, and, and it's always been consistently important to the organization to, to Mark, uh, to Mark Davis, and, and how the game day experience revolves around that as a starting point. What have the talks with RTC looked like? Uh, well, they obviously have a pretty strong understanding of the market, and they have vehicles that uh, I believe they use some for Golden Knights games. Uh, Tina Quigley has been instrumental in, in assisting us in that, and she remains very actively involved in the discussions. It's not a, unusual for people at NFL Stadium around the country to walk a certain number of I mean, can you talk about that experience? It's almost sometimes part of the experience. Yeah, there are some stadiums that have really no parking on right. site, just a few hundred spots, and utilize either the downtown area or some uh, ancillary lots. Right. Uh, there are some stadiums that do uh, a large sponsor activation. Ravens Walk comes to right. mind in Baltimore. Uh, Seattle, Seattle has a pretty vibrant uh, parking situation, Cleveland, uh, so there's different scenarios. We're obviously blessed that we have land available to us in the surrounding areas, a business district uh, surrounding the, the property that I think will capitalize on the ability to utilize parking. Some of the gaming properties will probably want uh, to open up their garages if it's available, but they don't want to they don't want to impact their, their, their traffic in the property. Uh, but I think we're lucky here in that we have a lot of options available to us and, and we'll investigate them all. And the Mark, price of the stadium, um, you know, we've been operating under a $1.9 billion uh, kind of framework at this point. You're crunching the numbers and looking, looking, going over the final designs and that type of thing. Is, is that the ballpark? I mean, can you give us anything? Well, can you mind the 1.9? number that are always thrown out that also includes the funds for practice facility, so back that off and then you can come to this one. I'm confident that will come into the budget, and I'm confident that will come into the contingency that the statute requires and that our bank requirements require. Nothing is set in stone yet, but what do you want the public to take away, especially NFL fans locally from today's meeting? I think it's consistent with what you've seen over the last couple of years. 
some of these meetings have had some moments of consternation, but this is a, a tremendous group of people and a tremendous uh, support staff that, that's been working on it, attorneys on both sides, and everybody is aligned, and everybody wants to see this project open on time, and everybody wants to see these people going to work, and today I think was a reflection of that and how efficient today went. And there was a lot of work that went on behind the scenes to get here today, um, but, but you saw the results of it and how efficient that was right. Yeah, I think all of the approvals were unanimous. What does that say about the negotiations between the team and the board? Uh, they're not always pleasant behind the scenes, but we get through it. And, uh, like I said, it's, just, it's, it's a good team of people on both sides. We have great people, they have great people. And, um, both sides are trying to protect the interests of all the parties. And you see that with the votes unanimous. And Mark, I know the owners have been involved. Sorry? In a lot. I know the owners have been, other owners have been kept knowledgeable about these negotiations, how complicated they'll prove everything on the 20th. I, mean, I certainly don't want to make any predictions, but we've had tremendous conversations with members of uh, the league staff that then brief the finance committee. Uh, there are committee meetings next week, and hopefully we'll get some positive news coming out of that. And then there's a league meeting at the end of March where we get some final votes. And then the, reason, the renewal options being removed from I'm sorry? That, the renewal options, the city of authority said you guys requested removing those to extend yeah, it I don't by wanna, the 20th. I don't want to, I'd let the attorneys address that. Does that require a vote from, from the other owners, or do they just need to provide a consent? There's some financing requirements at the point. Are there any outstanding reports at this point, or things seem to be going smoothly? What worries you? Uh, look, it's a $1.8 billion project. We're moving the franchise from one market to another. There's obviously going to be challenges along the way, but you've seen us overcome the ones to date, and we'll continue to work with the, the, the parties that have been tasked with that responsibility to help. Uh, the county has been tremendous. So yeah, I think we'll have plenty of roadblocks along the way, but we've shown uh, resiliency and that uh, will continue. When can we expect uh, renderings or groundbreaking news on the uh, training facility headquarters? I don't have an answer for that, Scott. I think we're, uh, we're, we're having discussions with architects. Uh, I spoke with Mayor March last week, and I'm keeping her abreast on our progress, and, and we have something to share. Good? You guys? Yeah. Mark, Mark, one last question. Yeah. Um, on game day experience uh, for our stadium, will, will fans be able to uh, dress up like our super fans, like Gorilla Rilla and, and uh, Violator and them? Will they be able to? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, Mark Bedane just answered that question. So we could put that that uh, to rest. That uh, fans will not be able to dress up, and our super fans will not be able to dress up and stuff. Uh, he kind of laughed at the question, you know, like like it was a ridiculous question. Um, but um, hopefully we could put that uh, argument to rest at the moment. Uh, so fans will be able to dress up and paint their face at the stadium. Um, you heard it first right here on Raider Reaction, um, from straight from Mark Bedane, the president and CEO of, of the Raiders. Um, and I, I knew that it was a dumb question to ask, but I had to ask it because there's a lot of rumors that people were not going to be able to, um, you know, our super fans will not be able to dress up and stuff. So, uh, so uh, he answered a lot of questions that I had. Um, other people answered a lot of questions for me. I'll recap that later on. Um, looking for Tommy White. I want to interview him on the construction progress. But uh, I'm going to flip this around so you guys can see what's going on. Mark Bedaney still getting interviewed. Steve Hill, chairman of the Stadium Board Authority. I think we feel good about it. I, I was surprised that it, 
uh, ended as quickly as it did. Uh, Jeremy and his team have done a fantastic job. Dan uh, Ventrelli from the Raiders and our team have done a fantastic job. It's, uh, hours and hours of work that's gone on behind the scenes to get to a resolution like today. But the board has, has kept, been kept up to speed and, and has uh, had their, their concerns addressed. And we saw today the culmination of a lot of that hard work. What do you want to say to local uh, I, I, I hope they have a little bit of patience. Uh, we don't. We would like it to be tomorrow, but uh, we have a lot of work to do. We're excited to see the stadium come out of the ground. We've opened our preview center, uh, and, uh, and the local fan base has responded. I think they enjoyed seeing uh, what we built there and, and learning a little bit about the history of the Raiders. Uh, and as the seed product comes up for sale, we look forward to educating people on what their game day experience is going to be like. Thanks. Got it. What's up, Tommy? How you doing? Hey, right here. Hey, I got Tommy White right here. Uh, hey, Tommy, um, so I have a couple questions for you, man. Um, so where are we at with the construction phase? And, and so right now we're still digging. We're almost done, probably going down about 30 feet. Uh, we're starting to, to drill to put the columns in. Okay. Um, laborers, we probably have about 100 laborers out on site already, and then you have operating engineers, and you have carpenters and cement masons, but um, the real concrete and the steel you'll see happen probably within six to eight weeks. You'll see, start seeing that coming up out of ground. Okay, so I've been, I was, I've been, I'm going every week to the stadium site and taking pictures and all that. I've seen um, about six to eight cement trucks down where the, the stadium's right. at King Keep. So, yeah, so when we, after we drill, we have to kind of fill those columns with concrete. So they, they're probably dropping some steel in there. There's also what's route trucks out there too. Um, so it's probably the, the cement trucks that you're seeing is still for the box cover, uh, where we're kind of rerouting where the uh, drainage is. Okay, okay. Um, Damn, I had another, had a, a bunch of questions. It's okay. Um, so, um, so you said in about six to eight weeks we'll start pouring yeah, a lot of concrete. We'll start seeing concrete and steel coming up out of the ground. Okay, and and uh, at that point, how many how many uh, uh, workers do you think you'll have out there? Um, you'll probably wind up seeing another hundred, and then you'll see them gradually go 20, 50. So, I don't know, I'd say by. Um, Let's say towards the end of this year, you'll probably have five, six hundred guys out there working. Okay, um, I get a lot of a lot, a lot of questions by um, you know Raider fans that that are in the construction business, that that are always they're always asking me, hey, how do I, how can I um, go get out there and, and work on the stadium and stuff like that. So if for, for I know we we've gotten a lot of calls from the guys out in uh, Northern California, so. Um, you know, if they're members of the Labor's International Union, they want to transcend to local 872. Well, we're more than happy to have you. Okay, and if they're not part of a union, how how can they get? Well, they into... got to get with some of the contractors that are out there. Okay. Um, so we do have some contractors out there that are not performing union work. Uh, that they'd probably be more than happy to go out and fill out some applications. Okay. And how do they find out that information? It should be on the uh, the stadium website. Stadium website. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and last thing, uh, that's it. Thank you very much, Tommy. Always a pleasure. Hang a Nation flag up there real soon, guys. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so uh, if you if you're uh, in the construction <laughs> business and you don't belong to a union, if you belong to a union and you want to come out to Vegas and and um, work, uh, you could put in a transfer from from your local union uh, to the local 872 in Las Vegas. If you're not part of a union, you could um and you want to come work over here on the stadium project, um, you could look up at the at the stadium. Um, um, board Authority um, uh, website, and you could uh, get the the information of all the, uh, the subcontractors, and you could apply there. Um, you know, I've been getting a lot of questions about that, so um, I'll recap in a little bit um, on what's going on with all that. Um, so I will uh, uh, get back with you guys. 
lot of lot of info. This meeting went by pretty quick, so uh, I'll go live in a little while and put it all into into a nutshell and give, give you more perspective of what's going on. All right, thanks. See you guys in a bit.